Wheels by the Foo Fighters for Philip Maminta. Grayson787, I still owe you a lesson, sir. Don't forget. And Cody Thomas. But before the rubber hits the road, I would like to take just a moment to thank the following people for signing up for the Patreon supporter of the Cause Club. Matt Keller, Dave Butcher, and longtime friend, Happy's Funhouse. Guys, thank you for your support. If you'd like to find out what that's all about, the link, of course, is in the description. Let's talk about Pat Smear's part first, because it's the same thing the whole way through the song. Poor Pat Smear. D. A. F sharp minor, 2, 4, 4. If you're allergic to F sharp minor, you just want to play the power chord, awesome. If you want to play this cold play thing, kind of F sharp minor, it'd be G, 2, D4, A4. That's a great way to play F sharp minor. And if you want, you can hear those open. E and B strings. It seems to me that Pat Smear is playing for real F sharp minor, but any way you want to play F sharp minor is A-OK -okay with me, and probably Pat Smear too, followed by E. So, D, A, F sharp minor, and E the whole time. Dave Grohl, on the other hand, has a capo on the second fret, and he takes the lead for the intro. Grab the A string fifth fret. I'm going to call it the fifth fret, not the third fret relative to the capo, so we don't have to do math when we get up here. With your pointer finger, and then with your ring finger, grab the A string seventh fret, and slide up to nine before you reach back for D7. Then back down from whence you came, A, nine, seven. Then you're going to grab the D string, let's call it the fifth fret now because we're going this way. The one that used to be the seventh fret is now the fifth fret. D string fifth fret relative to the capo and G string fourth fret relative to the capo and we're going to strum those two notes four times. Then we're going to play that D string right where it is on the fifth fret relative to the capo a few times before we fall down to four, and this is why we switched nomenclature, four, five, four, two, open, open A string. So. intro. Chris Shiflett is also capo 2 through the whole song and his intro is a rhythm part so he's going to be playing the same chords as Pat Smear. Apologies in advance I have a lot to say here but he's going to be playing them in a different way. Reason 1 is because he's got a capo on so he cannot play a low E chord right? Reason 2 is the guitar law of band nature that states you are not allowed to have two guitar players in a band in a song playing the same thing in the same place at the same time because otherwise why would you have two guitar players in the band, you know, three in this case, but Dave is doing other stuff. That said, the following is my educated guess for Chris Shiflett's intro based on aroundish where I saw his hands in the videos I watched and we know what chords he needs to be playing. Let's play a power chord on the A string actual fifth fret, but let's fatten it up with a fifth in the bass. The fifth refers to the musical thing, not the fret. It just happens to be the fifth fret, but the E string fifth fret as well. So we'll have five, five, seven, seven. And then we're moving to an E shape on the wrong strings on the 12th fret. So starting on the E string, 12, 12, 11. And then we're going down to E9, A9, D7. And then our same E shape on the wrong strings, but on the 7th and 6th frets. So... For my educated Chris Shiflett guess, 2021. In the verse, Pat Smear is still doing his Pat Smear thing, Dave Grohl is just singing, and Chris Shiflett is doing something awfully similar to, but a little different from Dave Grohl's intro. Grab the A string, third fret. The D string is going open to hammer on. Pluck the open G string, and then the reverse on the D string to open pull off. 
which should sound awfully familiar because it's the same notes as Dave Grohl's intro beginning. But it's a little different because we have a hammer on and not a slide and you get the open ringy sound of the open strings. Then we're going all the way up to the A string actual 12th fret D string actual 11th fret which is exactly the same as Dave's. So why did he bother to go all the way up here? I don't know, you can do either one you want, but maybe he wanted to do that slide, which he does, and which is pretty cool. Then we're going to A9, D7. And then we want to hear just the D7. And then we're going to go on the D string, four, five, four, open. And the A string's going five, open. So, for Chris's verse. When Dave joins back in on the guitar for the right before the chorus and the chorus part, it's Wonderwall time C add nine, which is just like four finger G. Having both of those fingers is really important, but your pointer and middle finger go down one string towards the floor. To G. And then we're playing E minor seven, which is G, but with no middle finger, and we do want to hear the open low E string. And then regular old D. Chris joins him with that <laughs> until, you know, the part after the chorus when it's just the same chords but a different rhythm. Let's get you started on the solo. I'm going off a live version here. I assume it's the same as the album version. It's the VH1 story. It seems like a written solo, so I'm guessing this is good. Grab the G string on the actual 7th fret. And the B string on the actual 10th fret, it's actual frets here. And then we're going up to the 9th fret on the G string with our middle finger. And the B string 10th fret. And then that G string's moving up to 11. And then the B string's going 10, 12, 9. And here's the cool move. 9, 10, 9, 7, G9. He does that a couple of times and then he migrates up to the B string 15th fret and he goes 15, 17, 14, 12, 10, and then it kind of joins the theme, 10, 12, 9, the move, and then he does the thing he did the first two times kind of again, except here he's going to grab G9 and B10 and make them both nines for the climactic, clim <laughs> for the climate change. And then for the last few times through the progression before the big climate change, you have that guitar that sneaks in with octave chords on the A string, 12th fret, G string, 14th fret, and just hangs there for the first three chords worth. believe you play wheels by Foo Fighters. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye. Faithful watchers until the end I'll bet you have no idea what today is. Don't care to wager a guess? Well, I can't hear you anyways. Today is our five year channel anniversary. Five years of doing this. A thousand and sixty two videos. Five years ago today I did a Pearl Jam song very poorly in my apartment with no real goal in mind, and look what it's blossomed into. Thank you for all of your fun encouragement, your support, both emotional and financial. If this does not deserve a bell of tremendous achievements, I don't know what does. This goes out to you as much as it goes out to me. Thank you for being on the other end. We're halfway through my 10-year contract with myself. At the end of 10 years, I'm going to reconvene with myself and see if we're gonna do another 10. The answer's gonna be yes. So see you for at least at least 15 more years, but more importantly, I'll see you tomorrow.